you guys up because I think I showed y'all me getting ready this morning um, so now it is 11 o'clock and I just sent my patient up to mother baby we had a shift change delivery which was as always like a good little energy boost whenever you come on and um, her delivery was super easy it was like her fourth kid she had no epidural so she pushed like once and had the baby um, so yeah, her recovery went very smoothly. So if you are not familiar with labor and delivery, I'll kind of go over like more in detail what we do and via my patients. So for her, um, once we found out she was completely dilated, we called the doctor to the room. Her room had already been set up for delivery. And what that looks like is um, we have like a table that have like instruments that the doctor might need. Um, it has like the clamp to clamp the umbilical cord when the baby comes out. It has like forceps, a uh, bulb syringe, um, gown for the doctor. And then we have a bag that we put underneath the patient so that whenever she delivers, we have an accurate way of um, quantifying how much blood she loses. So that's kind of some of the things they have on the delivery table. Um, what else so yeah so we called the doctor to the room because she was natural you know I was basically helping her to breathe through the contractions until the doctor got there and then as soon as the doctor got there we um it really is up to the provider or the preference but I noticed here they like to have the foot of the bed like broken down and then the legs and stirrups which I know can be sound pretty antiquated to some people but it's kind of like it's how they like doing it here so um, I had her legs in stirrups. I called the rest of the nurses into the room, um, like the baby nurse. And then there's a, another nurse that will help me out with like KBL, which is really, really nice. And then the tech as well. Um, we did not need a NICU nurse for this delivery because there was no complications. The mom didn't have a fever. 
Um, baby had looked good on the monitor the whole time, so we were not concerned about needing resuscitation. Now, usually if there is something going on with the patient where we anticipate baby may need resusc resuscitation measures, we'll call the NICU team and the respiratory therapist to be at the delivery. And if for whatever reason the baby comes out and you know they need we need extra hands, then we'll call them to the room step. So we had a call those people into the room, um, get the bread, the bread, <laughs> am I hungry? <laughs> get the bed um, broken down so that the uh, doctors have better access to the um, patient. And so, yeah, so she pushed for a little bit. And then as soon as the baby comes out, you know, we try and stimulate the baby. At this facility, the baby nurse will help. We call it kind of transitioning the baby is what we call it. It's transitioning the baby from in the womb to outside, making sure, you know, the lungs are nice and clear. So they'll dry and stimulate. And oftentimes we'll do like skin to skin directly. Um, otherwise, the uh, baby nurse will, will take the baby to the warmer where they will um, continue to transition the baby and they'll go ahead and do like the weights and measurements and all that fun stuff. So anywho, so after the delivery, the provider will see if there needs to be a repair um, of the perineum, see if there's any lacerations in the labia, the urethra, the perineum. And for my patient, she did have a laceration, so they repaired that. Since she did not have epidural, they'll usually numb the area with lidocaine, which helps. And I always like to have fentanyl at the bedside in case the lidocaine isn't enough, and I'll get the fentanyl through the IV. So they'll do that, and then after that, we get the patient cleaned up, um, and that's whenever my recovery period starts for that patient. So recovery is usually two hours. And during recovery, we're making sure their bleeding looks good. So we have to uh, massage their fundus, which is the top of the uterus, um, making sure it's nice and firm. And then we are also making sure during recovery that their pain is under control and that their vital signs are stable. So those are like my three priorities. I always tell my patient. Um, so I'm like in, in and out their room, making you know rubbing on their uterus also making sure the pain is under control and then i'll often like when i come back into the room i'll give them like crackers juice to get them started and then motrin if they um, want it and after that you know they're all good to go i'll take them to a mother baby and for fashion deliveries they normally stay for like two days but um, at this facility because of covid they try not to keep the patients in the hospital too long so if they have an uncomplicated delivery and a pretty smooth recovery, then they can go home the next day. So that's kind of uh, what we do like during the delivery and right after as a little quick summary. Um, so I'm just chilling right now. I really love that at this facility, they don't, you don't get a patient um, back to back a lot of times. You usually get a nice little break. So I got her up like at 9.30 and I haven't had a patient since <laughs> and it's 11 o'clock. So I'm getting a pretty good break. I'll probably get an induction later, I anticipate. So that would be cool. So whenever I get my next patient, I will kind of update y'all throughout the day. But yeah, just here chilling. This is my work phone. But I'll see you guys in a little bit.
so I totally forgot to pick up my camera <laughs> and tell y'all about the rest of my day. Hang on. Um, I just got the shuttle, walk into my car. Uh, so yeah, I remember getting a patient. I had like no patient for like a good three and a half hours, which was really nice. That's probably the longest break I've ever had. <laughs> uh, so um, my next patient, this was an induction of labor for high blood pressures. And so she had already been um, admitted through triage. So that cut out half the work for me. So all I did with her was got her settled into her labor room and um, the doctor wanted to put a cooked catheter in. So basically that kind of, that basically manually dilates the patient. And um, we also gave her a Cytotec, which uh, is a cervical ripening agent. And that will slowly put her into labor as well. I'm not the biggest fan of cooked catheters personally, but you know, they can work. I notice they don't use a lot of Cervidils here at this facility. Whereas at my last facility, they always do Cervidils. Cervidils, they do the same thing as Cytotec, but um, you can like, take it out. Cytotec, once you give it, it's given. Because you either give it as a pill or you insert it, insert it vaginally as a pill. And it absorbs. But uh, yeah, so it was a pretty easy shift, to be honest. Cannot complain. I'm curious for my nurses on here, what's like your ideal shift look like on your floor? This was like my ideal shift. Like had a delivery that went smoothly. And then I had a nice little break. And then I got an induction. So, all right, time to go home. Well, I am about to sit here and eat my dinner. Um, and I'm gonna also try working on, honestly, I was gonna try editing a video, but I think I'm just gonna watch a YouTube video instead and then um, call it a night. So I'm gonna end the vlog here. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I'll see y'all next one.